what is shaken, Internet? This is Salt's bringing you the How to Tank Four Dummies Cormrock LFR Guide. Cormrock is the third and last boss in the Hellbreach instance of the Hellfire Citadel Raid. This guide will cover the trash up to the boss and the boss itself, focusing on tank mechanics but giving a brief overview of the fight as well. For those of you in queue or already in the instance, a quick synopsis. At the red pool, swap tanks when the main one gets big and ready to explode. At green, kill all the hands and taunt when the other tank gets foul crushed. And at purple, avoid oozes and don't keep your back to a wall or pools as you'll get knocked back very, very far. Now first up is trash. You'll have to fight uh, quite a few packs of trash before the pre uh, between the previous Reaver boss and Cormrock. When the path splits, you'll just want to follow the right wall to get to the next boss. The packs of trash are relatively simple. The biggest problems would likely be the Hellfire Guardians. These guys don't do a ton of damage normally, but after doing their little leap attack, they will get empowered, dealing quite a bit of bonus damage for a few seconds. Use minor cooldowns at the very least when they come back to hit you. Now, Fell Touch Seers would probably be the priority for the entire raid, as they'll be healing their allies with Cauterize. Interrupt that heal whenever you can. Uh, there will also be assassins that appear periodically throughout the corridor in the, on the way to the boss. These guys are very annoying as they will stun the players for 5 seconds and then focus on them. Uh, if it's you, then great, you're the tank. And if it's someone else, just taunt them off. Now, the other adds um, are peons, which are pretty simple, so just AoE everything and move along. Now, when you reach Cormrock's room, you'll notice lots of new trash. Technically, there are five packs of trash you'll need to deal with, preferably separately, one at a time. First, try to get the patrolling group and pull them back to the entrance of the room. The Skull Smasher guy, the big guy, will knock you around and deal lots of damage to random people. So be sure to have your back to a wall to avoid flying into one of the other trash packs. Each of the big guys with casters should be pulled separately. The casters just do some basic damage, but the big guys will send hands out to grasp raiders. Actually, they don't do this in LFR, so that doesn't matter. What they will do is smash, which is just a raid-wide damaging move. Now, the little guys around each one of the big guys are a bit different, too. There are three types, green, purple, and red. Yes, they have names. No, that doesn't really matter. Green ones will make the players hurt anyone nearby them. Try to stay away from people when the green clouds are around them. Purple ones will make players drop nasty pools. Don't stand in these and keep moving. Red ones will mark players with a big DOT that is spread evenly amongst close raiders. For red ones, you'll probably actually want to stack up to avoid the little ones dying. And by the little ones, I mean those poor DPS. Now, the big guy in the middle has one of each color, so you get to deal with a little of each. The big guy in the purple pool has some purple guys, the big guy in the red has some red guys, and the boss in the back, which you can't engage yet, has a bunch of green guys you'll have to deal with together. Just remember, green, spread out, red, stick together, purple, avoid the pools. Now, once you kill the entire room, the boss finally jumps out, ready to wreck your face. No worries though, as we can handle it. Cormrock is a, eh, let's just say three phase fight. Technically, he switches between three phases and you get to decide in which order they are. At least, I think. I've only ever done it one way so far. Now, regardless, I'll cover the phases individually. Cormrock is a single target fight with no adds. The big guy will jump to one of the three pools, red, green, or purple, and use different abilities at each one. Each pool is unique in several ways, so let's look at each one individually. Let's start with red. When Cormrock jumps to red, he'll do two interesting moves. First, he'll create runes around the room. If a player steps on these, they'll take damage and do damage to anyone nearby them. However, if a player doesn't step on one after a few seconds, it'll blow up doing tons of damage to everyone in the raid. So, whenever he's at red and you're not tanking, you should go help clear out these runes. Now, if you are tanking, his other move will cause some issues. Explosive Burst will freeze Cormrock's tank in place, causing them to explode after a short while doing lots of damage to everyone within 40 yards. The off tank will need to taunt the boss when the main tank starts growing big and pull him away. Once the main tank explodes, you can swap back or just swap roles. It really doesn't matter in LFR. Now let's discuss the green pool. There is really only one mechanic here, the grasping hands. Cormrock will send out hands to grasp pretty much all the raiders, which will stop everyone from moving. The same is true for his other mechanic called Foul Crush which just gives a bigger, stronger hand on his current tank. Now, I'm not sure if the hands are avoidable or not, but just assume that no one in the raid will actually avoid anything since it's LFR. 
When the hands come out, everyone should AoE like crazy and try to kill them all as fast as possible. If the other tank gets Foul Crush, or the crushing hand around him, please, 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 please mark that big ad with a skull, so some DPS will actually realize that they need to free the tank. Also, you can taunt the boss to help out, since the stun tank probably won't be using any active mitigation. Now lastly is the Purple Pool. There he'll, he has two moves that he'll do here, SWAT being the big tank one. You'll need to put your back to a big, wide open area, preferably where there's lots of land behind you. Cormrock will knock his tank very far back, doing lots of damage if they hit a wall prematurely. Basically, if you don't go as far, you'll get more damaged. Now, you don't want to hit a wall and you don't want to land in a pool as well if you can avoid it, because giving landing in the pools hurts very, very bad. Now, if the other tank gets swatted, taunt the boss very quickly so the boss doesn't run across the entire freaking world. His other moves at the Purple Pool is Summoning Blobs, which will basically move along the main arena. They spread out from the Purple Pool and slowly slime their way across the room. Just move around these things and act like a maze, whatever. And that's pretty much Cormrock. The only other thing to note is that he will damage everyone a little bit when he jumps into the pools. And he will cast Pound during all phases, which just does a little bit of damage to everyone in the entire raid. Now he'll always jump to the nearest pool that he hasn't jumped to yet, about every minute and a half or so. After he cycles through all three, he'll go to any of them and start over again. There's really no order that you need to go in, but generally red, purple, and green is accepted in LFR because green is the grasping hands and those are the most annoying things to deal with. However, in real raiding or in other modes of raiding, you generally go red, green, and purple because that is the preferred mode in uh, preferred order in those modes. So let's go ahead and do a quick recap. At red, step on runes and taunt if the other tank is exploding. At green, kill all the hands and mark the tank hands so people know to free the tank as well. And at purple, avoid the oozes and keep your back to wide open spaces. New. Okay, that's enough of that. Uh, Cormrock is a lot different in normal and heroic. If you do foray into normal or heroic mode, do know that basically he does all of the moves for all the pools all the time. The tank mechanics are pretty similar for the pools, but there will be a lot more going on for the rest of the raid. Now there is definitely one of the, uh, this is definitely one of the more complicated bosses overall, especially in this wing of LFR, but it's really not much harder than the others, if really at all. I hope you have enjoyed this guide for dummies. If you'd like to see more Hellfire Citadel guides, click on the annotation in the top left of the video now, or in the description below. Please like, favorite, share, subscribe, all that jazz, and, as always, you keep it saltsy, internet.